Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Manjaro Budgie. But before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. This is Manjaro Budgie. When you boot it up into a live USB or into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Of course, you start right off the bat with Manjaro Hello. It starts off with documentation, the README, release info, and the wiki for Manjaro. And then support, you've got forums, discover software, mailing lists. And then on the project, get involved development or donate if you're a developer and you would like to help with the project hey get in contact with them and if you just like manjaro and you like what they're doing click on that donate button and go over and help them out a little bit so let's close out of this this is the screen this is the wallpaper we're met with first thing let's do a right click you get system settings budgie desktop settings first thing i want to do is we got a notification and that notification says it's package manager it's got some updates so let's right click let's see if we can turn this into dark mode uh dark theme all right we're in dark theme first things off the bat you've got firefox as your web browser you've got files let's open the file system and with budgie being built from genome i'm pretty sure if you click here you can make your folders bigger so let's click back out of that you got your usual suspects over here home documents downloads music pictures videos trash then over here you've got edit select all show hidden files with one click you can show all your hidden files if you don't want those out there, just click it, hide them back. And then preferences, you can open up preferences, sort folders before files, expandable folders in list view, create a link, permanent delete something, performance, searching subfolders, show thumbnails, count number of files and folders, icon view captions, first, second, third, you can set those up. You got a little bit of customization you can do there. So let's close out of that. Let's go back over here help and then about files it just tells you files 40.2 let's go to console let's see if it's got htop it does not have htop let's see if it has top yes it does and right now we are using 614 megabytes of the two gigs that i have assigned to it i always like running these linux systems in low spec virtual machines i usually just go around two gigabytes and two cpus so that way if you're watching this video and you have an older system that you would like to try it on you can kind of see what kind of function you're going to get out of it and what kind of speed you're going to get out of it so that's pretty decent under 600 megabytes at rest with nothing but the terminal open is pretty decent and it's got 1300 in the buffer slash cache so let's close out of that go over here here's our menu our budgie menu if you can see right there it's got the little app icon on it you come down we got accessories you've got files hp device manager Kavanta manager manjaro user guide quick chat software tokens text editor Wall Street Control, Window Shuffler Control, Games, you've got Steam, Installed, Out of the Box, Graphics, G Thumb Image Viewer, Internet, you've got Firefox, HexChat, Pigeon Internet Messenger, Thunderbird, Transmission, and you get Office. It comes with only Office out of the box and Calendar. So let's open up only Office and see what it looks like in here. Let's open it up a bit. That's pretty. This is a free suite you get from only Office. It comes with a document spreadsheet and presentation now what i have noticed on a lot of the gnome versions i see of this is that it seems to be a bit small for me like when you open a document let's go ahead and open that up all these up here seem to be a bit small that bothers me a little bit if you're like me you need something a little bigger you can come over here go to settings auto scaling go to that 150 and i want to go ahead and go to a dark theme let's click it to a dark theme and apply now when you go back over to document everything is a lot more crisp looking a lot more easier to see and then you can move around and get things done the way you need to. One thing I do want to say about only Office, let's close out of this, document, spreadsheet, and presentation. They all save in Microsoft format. So your doc would be a docx, your spreadsheet would be an xlsx, and your presentation should be pptx. So they save in Microsoft format right off the bat. I'm going to show you something here in a second that you need to do, and then that way when you do documents and you're sharing them by email or you're sharing them over the cloud, that they will be consistent and you can use them between partners using Microsoft, products and you using Linux products. So let's go back down to Office. We're done with that. Other, add and remove software, Bluetooth manager, HP UI scan, login window, Manjaro notifier settings, Manjaro settings manager, preview control, QT5 settings, settings, and YAD settings. So first things first, let's go to add and remove software. If you're going to use a LibreOffice or you're going to use only Office, what you're going to want to do is come over here and go to preferences and 
I'm not going to be able to do this in a virtual machine, but I'm going to tell you the steps that you need to take. It's going to open up general. First thing you're going to want to do is refresh your mirrors. What that does is just refresh all the locations that you're going to be able to download things from. Next is go to advanced. Nothing needs to be changed there and third party. First thing you're going to want to do is enable AUR support. If you want to enable snaps, you can do that as well. I'm not a fan of snaps, but maybe you are. If you want to go ahead and do that as well. Let's close out of that. Once you enable AUR support and you refresh your mirrors, remember, that's the first thing you need to do is refresh mirrors, then go to third party, enable AUR support. Then once AUR is up here, these are the two searches you're going to do. You're going to do TTF, which is true type font, just TTF dash Microsoft, TTF dash Windows. So you're going to type in TTF Microsoft. And then once you find those, you'll see a list and it'll show you fonts download. And then you want to back up and type in TTF Windows. It'll give you a list there just like that. Download. You're going to download both sets of those fonts. And then when you go over and you open up only Office and you go to document and when you choose font, you'll be able to choose Microsoft fonts. And then that way, when you're doing things back and forth document wise, your fonts are going to be able to match with the people that you're doing business with. With, and they won't even know you're not using a Microsoft product. It works on LibreOffice and it also works on OnlyOffice. Let's exit out of that. So let's go back over here. Programming, you've got Icon Browser, Sound and Video, Videos, Lollipop, Cheese, Brazero, Disk Burner, System Tools, Budgie Desktop Settings, Gparted, Hardware Locality, Install Manjaro, Manjaro Hello, SUS Studio Image Writer. Let's say you're running a Linux distro at present and you want to try out Manjaro Budgie. Go download SUS Studio Image Writer. Go download you an ISO. Go into SUS Studio. It'll load it right onto the USB and you can give a new distribution a shot. And then time shift. Time shift is very important. You can set it up for RSync or you can run it for BTRFS, ButterFS. Whichever one you're running on your system, just pick it. And then what you do is you're going to take a next and then you're going to take a snapshot of your system. What it will do on the first one, it'll be a little bigger snapshot. It'll take a snapshot of your whole system and save it. And then from that point forward, when you ch make changes onto your system, it will take smaller snapshots and just update with what has changed on the system. So that way, if you had a catastrophic problem with your system or for some reason it crashes, which never happens in Linux. But if you come across something that messes your system up, you can go into time shift, restore, and it'll restore to your previous session where everything was fine and then you can go right from where you were at. Go back over to system tools. Let's go to budgie desktop settings. Right here, you got your style of widgets, icons, cursors, notification position, dark theme, built-in theme, animations. You can turn those on or off. Fonts, desktop, desktop icons. If you want those on, you can click those and they show up. Watch, boom, there you go. You got desktop icons. Now you can close. Number of virtual desktop, icon size, click policy, fonts it shows you right here all your font sizes if you want to make those bigger you can make them bigger just by a click of a button or you can change them all one by one then you got raven windows top panel top panel right here you can add applets to your top panel you can take applets off right now it's got the budgie menu it's got spacer and it's got the icon task list so let's go out of that Let's go back over here. Let's look at settings. Then over here, you've got your network, Bluetooth, background. You can change your wallpapers from here. If you just want to pick, let's say, let's go with the light bulb that's all bright in our face. There it is. Let's change that. Notifications. You can turn do not disturb on. Lock screen notifications on. Uh, applications that you want to be able to give you notifications. If any of these are ones you don't want, all you got to do is click on them and you can shut it off. You can turn sound alerts off. You can do whatever you need to do right there. All right, let's go to search. You can set up search. When you use your search, do you want to search files, add and remove software, calculator, calendar, lollipop, terminal? If you want to leave all those on, you can't. List of applications, privacy, online accounts. If you want to come over here and set up your Google, Facebook, Microsoft, set those all up so they can be used in conjunction with your system. You can do that. Sharing, sound, power, displays, mouse, default applications, date and time, about. Pretty much your standard looking Manjaro. Crisp, clean, fast, functional. Manjaro GNOME, I like, but I think I really like the budgie version of Manjaro a little better. I don't know why. It just seems to be a little bit more crisp. It seems to be a little bit more clean. But if you're looking at giving Linux a try, most definitely my first recommendation is Manjaro. Whether it be KDE, whether it be GNOME, whether it be budgie, whether it be XFCE, whatever desktop environment you want to give a shot. You can watch some of my videos. I've covered most of those desktops. They're interchangeable between distributions. But I've had comments saying that me leading people to Manjaro is... Horrible for the Linux community, but I disagree. Manjaro has been on my system for over three and a half years. I've had updates. I've had rolling updates. 
and I have never had any problems other than my fonts not rendering correctly. But I fixed that and I explained that in a previous video. I will stand by my statement that if you're new to Linux and you want to leave Windows, or if you're in Ubuntu now, or you're on Mac OS and you want to try the bleeding edge of Linux, zip on over to Manjaro.org, download you a copy of Manjaro, throw it on a USB stick and play around with it. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Please, before you leave today, like and subscribe to my channel doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Thank you for watching my video today, and I'll see you in the next video.